Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. everybody hail and welcome back to this week's podcast the random heathen ramblings pro- prod <laughs> podcast uh Midgard musings production thank you so much for coming back and tuning in this week we've got a, a guest lined up that's going to be joining us coming all the way from the netherlands i was a guest on his podcast about a month or two ago i, I guess um but we're going to be talking today with his name is stein hawks and he is a Norse pagan himself in the Netherlands. He is also the host of the Greyhorn Pagans podcast. And as I understand, uh, serves a leadership position as Jarl of the Greyhorn Pagans uh, tribe. We're going to learn more about that because I'm not 100% sure uh, to what degree that tribe extends in terms of is it, you know, uh, a, a term that they use for online community or is it something of a more grassroots level sort of thing so we're going to be talking with him about that and just trying to get a sense of what's going on in uh, the Netherlands with with heathenry Um, so before we get into that be sure to please give this video a like give the channel you know a a subscription uh, subscribe to the channel follow the podcast on all the podcast streaming platforms wherever it is that you catch it do be sure to upvote like follow you know, do all those things, um, and click the link tree link down in the description or over here in the show notes, wherever you find it. Um, that link tree link has all of the ways that you can support this podcast. Um, so follow me on all the socials. There is Patreon that you can subscribe to as well for some added uh, perks or, or or benefits or things that really help uh, support this channel and what I do on the podcast. Um, so do be sure to check that out, and then check the description as well for the links to the Greyhorn Pagans podcast and, and just the Greyhorn Pagans tribe, I guess. it's a, They got a website. There's some social media things, I think, that you can find. But, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Stick around to the end so you can hear about all the things that we're going to be talking about today. It's going to be another random heathen ramblings with myself and Stein of the Greyhorn Pagans podcast. Let's welcome them in. All right, folks. Well, we are joined here today, as I mentioned earlier, with uh, Stein Hawks of the Greyhorn Pagans podcast. Stein, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you back here. Actually, uh, well, this is your first time here on my show, but I was just recently, uh, I say recently, but like we we, we filmed the, the content uh, a month or two ago, and uh, yeah. I guess it just recently aired or, or released on your on your platforms, right? Yeah, just yesterday the uh, the audio uh, released on the uh, the Graham Pagans podcast, um, which is a a nice sync. Of course, I didn't even do that on uh, on purpose, yeah. but it just just happened to um, to match up. So yeah, well, what was interesting is like uh, while we're recording this today is of course uh, in advance to when it's airing, so the people that are listening and watching this will have time uh, to to go and check out you know what we talked about um on your platforms but uh we were originally supposed to do this yesterday so today is sunday recording we were originally supposed to do this saturday there were some double bookings going on which happened uh but yeah. it does work out perfect today that you know the our our content that we that we uh recorded on your show came out the day uh earlier for us to to record this so it's perfect timing yeah yeah no, absolutely yeah yesterday was almost like almost triple booked even um i hate when that happens <laughs> oh yeah that's that's why i like started putting things in my uh like actually on my phone calendar and working with uh like a scheduling app more yeah. because it, it happens too often it's kind of a good problem to have i guess you know uh it, it's <laughs> if, if, if you're hunting down people or or like scrambling to to find guests or or content to record it's it can be a bit stressful so i guess the opposite of that is is to have more 
than what you know what to do with at times and, yeah. and, to, and to get it's, yourself together is, is a good problem to have you know it's uh, a good first world problem uh, so yeah. to speak <laughs> i did that to myself yeah uh, was it i think last week i was having lunch with some friends and um i had a guy uh he he was on my show last week so the last episode prior to this one mm -hmm. um i had him re scheduled to come on at a specific time and i'm like eating lunch with some friends and it was like 30 minutes past and i had totally forgotten about <laughs> about it and he messaged me and said hey man are we still on for today i'm like Shit. yeah um but but can you give me a couple of, <laughs> can you give me a couple hours and i felt so yeah. bad and he was really cool about it so it, it all worked out obviously but uh yeah man like even the best made plan sometimes you know you end up just losing it sometimes so but yeah. you are you are in the Netherlands, correct? Yes, yes, I am. So this is pretty cool. I've 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 had some some guests on my show from across the world. I've had a gentleman on here from Australia, um, and I'm trying to think if I've had others here from other parts of the world. You know, I've had different guests from other parts of my country, but you're mm -hmm. the first from from Europe that I can that I can think of. So this is a pretty exciting, pretty exciting thing. How uh. How do you feel about having guests from like other parts of the world on your show? What's that like for you when you get to book people on your show? Um, well, most of my guests are uh, American, of course. It just oh, okay. seems to be um, like when it comes to entertainment and podcasting and knowledge, um, much of it is in the U.S. I mean, you know, bigger country, uh, the language barrier isn't as as big of course um but you know i i do i do try to uh, to get people from uh, from europe on as well um uh, if i do they are mostly from from the uk uk and ireland uh, i'll soon have a um irish woman on cool um but yeah it's uh it's it's quite rare actually if i uh, get to do a podcast in uh, in dutch i think i've done one or maybe two so far in dutch um which is quite weird actually like if i i'm because i'm so used to um having to speak english you know with also with my uh, my wife being american of course you know there are mm. definitely days that um well, most days actually that I speak English more than I do Dutch. So, and especially on wow. podcasts, like 98% is in English. So when I get to speak Dutch, like I have to think about things. Like I have to think what I want to say because it's it feels weird speaking my own language really on the podcast. Yeah. So it's it's kind of it's kind of odd, but you know, um I can't imagine, really, man. Like of course, English is my native language, and I don't. I'm not bilingual in the sense that I don't fluently speak other languages. I know some other languages and or words and phrases in other languages, but in terms of conversationally, being able to carry a conversation in any language, um, I probably couldn't. I, I, I could get myself into some trouble, like just enough. And in, in like, I know some German, I know some Russian, because I have a friend who's from Belarus, and he taught me, or he was he was like when we were I was. A younger uh, fellow he was we, we lived nearby each other and this is going back almost 20 years now mm -hmm. he was teaching me russian back then and it's almost like riding a bike i i forgot a lot of some of what he taught me but if i were to like pick up a book and read it or start talking to it with him in, in, in it in that language again because that's of course his native language yeah it would it, i would like pick it back up and it wouldn't be but i, I would be busting my ass along the way <laughs> you know <laughs> pretty pretty yeah. badly so that's wild that's man it. i didn't think that someone who's you know you speak english very well i mean you have a very good command of the language so yeah props to you for that but um what uh so i wanted to ask you you know what uh you're in the netherlands you're from the netherlands mm -hmm. of course um yes. and you are a, a norse pagan right a, a germanic heathen yeah you? yeah norse germanic yes okay mm -hmm. and have you always been that has that uh, has been has that been your spirituality religion your whole life um well when i was a bit younger uh i want to say like late 
late teens, maybe I started experimenting a bit with uh, with religion, like most of the Netherlands is uh, Catholic or Protestant, well, Catholic, Roman Catholic. So, um, you know, religion has always been like around me. My, uh, my grandparents from father's side were very, um, very strictly religious. My grandfather was a uh, a part of the church choir for uh, the men's choir for like 50, 60 years, like for a long, long time. Yeah, his whole life. Um, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much most of it. Um, you know, to church, they went to church every Sunday um, with my grandmother from mother's side. Uh, we usually just did it on the... Um, on the bigger holidays so uh mm. christmas easter you know we went to the the church where um where she always went uh when you know when she was a well a kid because that's where like where we would meet the the family you know the the great aunts the great uncles um that's like pretty much where the family from mother's side would gather around the holidays um so yeah, I tried the, you know, the Christian Catholic thing for a bit. And um, I mean, it, it kind of, it kind of worked. You know, I did get some answers. I did get some things that, um, that I wished for. Mm -hmm. But uh, the one thing that really kept me from uh, like going full Christian or going full Catholic was the, um, like how I always call it, the belief or else. Ah, uh, yeah. That, that, was, that, that, that was those absolutes kind of thing. Yeah. Feeling in absolutes. Okay. Yeah. That was the, um, the, the one hurdle I, uh, I couldn't pass. Like it, it just brought so much stress on mm. me, like constantly having to you know to watch what i do watch what i say watch what i think even yeah that's it it just it took over and it brought on so much stress and i wasn't really able to do anything else because like first thing i have to had to think about is would this be approved mm. and so i just i dropped it i i and i went through life kind of well, agnostic, if you will, like um, believing that there is a higher power. I just, you know, didn't know what it was or who it was or how to call it. Mm -hmm. um, and then like by my early 20s, really, I think it was 21, 22, I was already kind of going into paganism, animism a bit because it just it felt better also being the um the original beliefs of europe of course the original gods of europe um and yeah funny enough the tv series vikings on the the history channel was the the real catalyst for me that's when when something just clicked when i was like this Mm -hmm. this is it this is this is what i want this is what i see this is how this is what i i recognize and from there yeah you know started looking for for groups to join of course people to connect with um which is harder than it may seem at the beginning because like so many people so many groups are just focused on biking you know, yeah. like being a viking or larping as a viking and yeah like yeah that's that's cool you know of course it's cool but i wanted more i wanted to go deeper like i i don't want to just you know scream hail odin or hail thor and you know yeah the warrior and that shit yeah you know? yeah the warrior-esque aspect of things and that's that was a you know, I, I, you're not the only one. I'm one of them that, you know, started from a uh, a, a, a religious worldview. I was raised Christian, you know, uh, in, in a non-denominational 
uh, version of Christianity, you know, so it wasn't like we had a name to, you know what I mean? Like there, we weren't Baptist, we weren't Protestant, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. non-denominational. But coming from that into a, uh, a, a religion that is polytheistic and then figuring out the, you know, learning the worldview part that was the different that was the most challenging transition you know because again you know i was raised to believe certain things in a certain way much like what you were saying is the do this or else you know yeah there was there was all the the dogmatic stuff that like you know what's what's ironic to me is is is, is how much christianity is um and this is in no way to to like bash christians or anything because i know plenty of them that are good-hearted people so i don't mm. use the term and then try to lump everybody into one category but it's you know there's this all this concepts of of uh you know love and and uh but 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 so how how much of the doctrine is is fueled by fear and like do this or else kind of thing like you were saying you know it's if you don't do a certain thing a certain way if you don't believe a certain way then you're destined for eternal punishment you know yeah and i'm like uh kind of like with you i was i i at a certain point in my life reached this ability to think for myself instead of just being led by what others were telling me to believe. <laughs> and at that point I was like, holy shit, you know, like I'm an, I'm, I'm walking on eggshells, you know, that term, like walking on eggshells this whole yeah. time, being afraid to, and then, you know, going into that mindset of, of trying to figure things out on my own or, or learning things on my own, right? Trying to like, all right, well, this is what I was told, but what can I figure out on my own? What can I learn on my own? That was a huge jump into like, well, I know what happens according to this doctrine that I was raised to believe. I know what happens to people that do stuff like this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or what could happen to people who do stuff like this. It was discouraged. It was, it was not something supported in, in, in that belief structure, really. It's just, you know, have this faith, this blind belief in, in don't question things, you know, <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't challenge it so much. And, yeah. uh, I don't know. It, it was liberating in a way to, to reach a point that in my life where, uh, paganism gave me that opportunity because I did the same thing. I, or a very similar thing as you did, right? I, I, I stopped going to church. I stopped believing uh, as a Christian would believe. And I really didn't find anything right away. I, I kind of was like, well, whatever it is, I don't know, but I, it ain't what I've been raised to believe in. And that's not where I feel at home anymore. Um, so you, you said that Vikings was a big, you know, catalyst for you to push you into learning about the gods of Europe and where yeah. you're from, you know, and, uh, I've not talked to too many people like this in, in this way. Um, everybody that I talk to um, are here on this side of the pond, you know, like uh, Americans as well, mm -hmm. who have found this belief system. And I, I'm always curious to get someone's perspective who is a native European. Um, when you see so much of non-Europeans discovering this, this path, you know, and wanting to become more, uh, integrate, have it, you know, become more integrated in your life. What are your, what's, how do you feel about that? Like, do you think it's appropriation? Like what, what what's your general <laughs> feeling about things? You know, I'm always curious to hear what people think about that from, from your perspective. If you're willing well, I don't to think, talk about it. Yeah, no, of course, of course. No, I think appropriation isn't, uh, isn't the right term because, um, I mean, in a way, every, um, well, let's say every Caucasian American um, can trace their lineage back to Europe. Um, uh, it's just that I always found it, um, found it funny that like it is mostly Americans who are um, like where where there is such such a big wave going on of rediscovering and revival um because this is kind of going back to the um it's kind of a controversial idea but there is some truth in it the idea of blood and soil that it's just uh that it's easier to reconnect with something uh you know with the divine or the gods or whoever if you truly 
um, live in the part of the world, in the lands where, you know, they rule. Um, so the soil type or the, the, the soil part may not be the case for uh, for most Americans, but definitely um, the blood part, the, uh, the lineage, the heritage, I, I do believe that um, that that is a, a big reason why. And also just looking at how how strict and how hard the uh, the church can be in um, in the States. It doesn't surprise me one bit that so many people just, you know, leave that behind. My uh, my wife actually comes from a very strict religious family. Um, both her, uh, I believe, both grandparents, or like from, from both sides of the family, were very, uh, very strict. I believe from it was from father's side that he even like led um a couple of the the major churches in the uh the american northwest mm -hmm. so um for her to be a well a eclectic witch a all-time witch um you know married to a heathen is something that she is well she's very happy about it because um it feels more like home, but at the same time, she is kind of nervous because of how strict it is and how you know dangerous it can be, you know, disowned and all of that. But um, no, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually quite thankful for the the huge wave going on in the in the states because as Europeans, we do still have a tendency to look very much to uh, to the United States to. You know to see what's going on and see what we hmm. should be doing because of the well i guess now more perceived superpower you know america has always been you know the the big brother of europe so to yeah. speak you know they they got over there they got a chance to do over and they did well like they built up this, this huge freaking empire so we always try to stay try to stay in context try to stay friends and economic bonds and whatever and most of our pop culture, of course, coming from the from the U.S. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, I think it's 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 a very it's a good good thing. And like I always encourage people who um, who did find their way again back to the uh, the European gods to uh, you know you found your way back to the gods. Now come back over to the motherlands. <laughs> I know a lot of people like the the idea of of going on these like journeys, these pilgrimages in a way, right? To to return back to a land that uh, the gods are from, basically, you know. And I I know that that's a a really like native view of things, you know what I mean? Um, the indigenous beliefs, you know, people again feel uh, or maybe have a propensity to feel that you are closer to the gods if you go back to where their stories originated from, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I have, I've, I've kind of evolved as a pagan myself into, like, I, I appreciate that concept. Um, and at the same time, I also find connection to the divine in ways that transcend physical, like physical connection. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the earth, the, the 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 natural elements, all of the things that I feel, the the gods, right? As, as characters, as as figures, are are archetypes in a way to bigger and and more inclusive things. And so the natural forces, the the elements of nature that were were given names by indigenous people, you know, can be felt and connected to wherever you are in the world it's it, it's not like you have to be you know uh on the shores of norway or in iceland or in 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 what used to be you know saxony in germany or any of these other places where these gods originate from it's like you don't have to be there to necessarily feel the the, the essence of the aspects that are described in the stories in the myths and the lore and in the sagas uh it adds an element i think to it to, if you are able to do so, mm -hmm. um, it's just not 
at least not for me. It's it's not like I'm not I'm not I don't have this burning desire to just uproot everything I've built here to start over just because of what you're talking about, right? Having that kind of like blood and soil yeah. connection. Um I would still like to travel. I would still like to visit. I would still like to go to places, right? Some of these uh, historical places where, you know, like I would go, I would love to, to, to visit the archeological sites of where like Donner's Oak was, you know, and, and um, visit some of the name places in, in Scandinavia that, mm -hmm. that still have the names of the gods in their place. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that would be really exciting. Um, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, you know, that's why I said that it, it can make the connection easier. It's not a, a prerequisite, you know, and if, if you know, you are established in the U.S., like you, you have your group, you have your people, your, your tribe, your clan, whatever you, you know, you know, you want to call it, then by all means stay there. You know, it's, it's. Mm. it's a web it's the web of weird and you know there there are certain connections of course like we are connected all over the world that's that's the you know the knots where the the threats come together what you know which makes the net so you know if mm. if you're comfortable where you are and you feel the gods where you are and you can have that connection with the gods where you are then you know by all means stay there i think you know the gods would agree with that you know they look look down at you and they're like okay but you got a good life here you know we're, we're looking yep. after you here and you can connect with us here why are you going over there to start again you know yeah i feel like um and i and i posted something about this recently um on on some of my platforms was was that you know the gods are less concerned with us on a day-to-day sort of thing as as much as they are concerned with what are we doing to uh fulfill our obligations to our people to our to our families yeah. to our kin to our tribes right um because we are we are known by our deeds you know the things that we read about in the stories the myths the sagas um these aren't these aren't stories of people who are just blogging about it or writing it down like these were <laughs> these are stories of people that went out and did things you know what i mean they accomplish yeah. things and the doers the the deeds are are what uh i feel kind of create that immortal timeless uh essence of us right we we are remembered by what we've done not by what we talked about yeah and oddly enough so much of what things that are being done today are stuff like this like podcasts and 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 other uh social platform distributions to, to 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 talk about these things and to like spread that message to spark that fire to plant those seeds and i was going to ask you too with with regards to your podcast um what made you want to start podcasting and particularly have a, a a pagan podcast what was the inspiration behind you starting that um well the name greyhorn pagans is um like even that there's a whole story attached to it um like i said i was like trying to find groups to join groups that were like really dedicated to paganism and researching and you know gatherings and all of that which you know was quite hard um so when i did find a good one or what seemed to be a good one at first heathens foe and honor um I can honestly say that from them I have learned most. Um, you know, it, it seemed like a good group. It seemed like a good good space to be in. But unfortunately, um, ego took over, and mm. you know there were a couple of like bigger names. Uh, in that group, which, you know, I, I commend them for it. It's absolutely amazing to have some more, you know, well-known writers and researchers in your group. Um, but it was a lot of, like, I wanted to go further back, like not just Vikings and the Viking age and all, like I wanted to go a bit, a bit further back to 
you know, the Indo-European ages, like where, where do the ancestors of our ancestors come yeah. from? You know, what was paganism before it was paganism? Um, but somehow that wasn't appreciated. Uh, I got told to delete those posts and to, you know, stop doing research and all because that's not what the group was about, hmm. which I found very odd, but you know, okay, so be it. Um, and now was know, this a, started... sorry to cut you off. Was this a, like a, a strictly online group or was this like grassroots also where they um, it was mostly online, but they were definitely making efforts um, and were on their way to uh, to build it up as a like a physical society as well. You know, meetings did take place. I did meet one of the other um, European admins, uh, a uh, a Belgian. So it was that was nice. It wasn't that long of a long ways of a travel, but still kind of a vacation because it is still another country. Mm um so you know i did i did have good times there but it was really as soon as um as egos took over that i found myself kind of drifting away from it like wanting more but not being able to uh to get more and that's when i started my own group that's when i started the um the gray horn pagans and so that's well, so that I could be in control, so to speak, so that I could, you know, if I wanted to go deeper, if I wanted to, you know, research or talk about some topics that maybe were related to it, but not specifically heathen or pagan, then mm -hmm. I could, you know, and I wasn't being, being stifled or held back. And um, how I started podcasting was actually um a few years ago when the whole world went crazy because of some virus mm. um i had to take odd jobs here and there i was working as a um as a freelance cook at that time and so i you know lost it all i wasn't able to freelance anymore and most of the uh the restaurants closed of course so i had to take odd jobs with one of the first being uh delivery bike delivery uh, well delivery on bike and if you work like five days a week a couple hours a day you know you can only listen to your playlists your music playlists for for so long for so much until it's like okay you know i've heard this song come by 10 times already and i've skipped over it like 20 times already i need something new mm -hmm. and that became podcast so i started as a like as a podcast fan first, just listening to different kinds of podcasts about, um, well, pro wrestling. I've always been a big pro wrestling fan and you okay. know, more about the, the occult and paganism, found a few things, already knew some creators like uh, Survive the Jive, of course. Um, and what, it, what really got it started for me is when I was a, uh, a guest on my third eye the my third eye podcast i was uh invited or like kind of got myself invited actually to uh to talk about tartaria the the empire of tartaria and cymatics and everything connected to that and i just had so much fun doing that and uh like doing a, a round table on his his show once that um yeah hi Tim. sorry that's my yeah oh hey we got another guest <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think he's wanting to go so let me open the, um, the back door yeah real yeah quick sure. so that he, uh, he doesn't keep interrupting that's all good yeah do your thing yeah yeah over <laughs> Ah, uh, cats gotta love them. You get they're um, something, man. They are even Dutch, <laughs> oh, even yes. Dutch cats evidently have an attitude. It's it's just a cat. Thing. Oh yeah, that's it's it's a worldwide <laughs> thing. It's just a cat thing. Yeah, <laughs> and he for sure has an attitude. Um, he looks too much like me. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, like I just had so much 
so much fun doing that that I, you know, bought a a microphone like a because I used to, the first I believe the first podcast that I did with him was just um like my my laptop microphone so it mm. was the quality was absolutely um absolutely horrendous um so you've all know, been there I, man I, I look back at my old content and i'm like man why did i even bother back then but you know you make do with what you have best you can so yeah no of course you know everybody has to start somewhere and like little did i know that you know the quality would be absolutely uh, absolutely horrendous you know laptop speakers laptop mic mm, not the best um so i just you know i started my own podcast wanted to keep it with uh with members of the Greyhound pagans first and you know we did a couple things which was you know it was nice it was interesting but i felt like i like if i wanted to grow the podcast and if i wanted to uh gain more knowledge i had to branch out and like i saw all those podcasters and content creators they were always doing series you know always doing multiple parts of a particular topic so i was like okay what can I do? Like what is kind of pagan related, but still um, like can still be relatable to, to other people. And, you know, just looking at the world around us, especially at um, at that time, I think this was like about a year later. Um, you know, I thought of Ragnarok. Because, you know, it, it pretty much seemed like the world was coming to an end. Mm. Um, or at least the world as we know it. And, you know, in the Eastern religions, that's, um, of course, like it's called the Kali Yuga. And then in um, in the more um, Abrahamic faiths, it's the apocalypse. And we found some things that, like, sounded very similar and so i just invited a a whole bunch of people and we did multiple hour shows talking about ragnarok and the uh you know the the commonalities that uh that we could find in the in the different texts and you know things that we saw around us and trying to um trying to make make sense of it and kind of relate to what was in the text like okay do we have examples like actual physical examples of that in you know in our modern world with the um like biggest example being for example the ice giants well what are like the modern day giants like the tech giants you know microsoft hmm. apple hmm. and ice giants well i mean they're pretty they're pretty numb they don't they don't care so ice cold icy yeah you know and so we yeah so we just we puzzled some some things together and that was that was really the um the kickoff i just i had so much fun doing that that i um you know i i got myself some good editing uh editing programs i got myself eventually a uh, a much better microphone with much better quality and i've been doing it for like close to a year and a half now just about all kinds of topics all things that's that are interesting and yeah you know not not all pagan related necessarily but all within the realms of um paganism witchcraft mysticism yeah i've i've, I've found myself doing something similar recently just to mix mix things up a bit because this is a heathen podcast of course and mm -hmm. that's a very niche category you know yeah. in, in the grand scheme of things and uh i don't want to sacrifice the integrity of the brand or the name or anything to just get more views or whatever because i but but it's also fun to get other people on the show that are maybe not necessarily pagan or anything like i had a guy a few weeks ago um who is a fitness coach you know what I mean? And it, it was like, we weren't really talking so much about anything pagan related. It was just, what is this guy doing for his 
brand and his community. And I mean, because again, you never know just who's listening and watching your stuff. Who's like, man, I need a fitness coach or I need to talk to somebody about that. And the next thing you know, you you through the networking capabilities, right? Like you you create this connection uh, with, yeah. with, with people, you know, and talking about connections, you know, Greyhorn Pagan, you, you've mentioned a few times already, uh, you know, the name of your podcast is the Greyhorn Pagans podcast, but you've alluded to a group that you created called the Greyhorn Pagan. So can you tell us more about that? And is it an online thing only? It, are, is it, are you mentioned talking about, you know, bringing something up that's going to be more like grassroots or, or physical, but would you, yeah. call, would you kind of fill us in on on what and who the Greyhorn Pagans as a collective, as a group are and what it represents? Yeah, of course, I'd love to. Um, the tribe of the Greyhorn Pagans is, um, is a tribe that I started, uh, that I run together with my, uh, with my wife. Um, it's a very eclectic bunch of people. Um, we have pagans, witches, um, decoders, shamans, um, and I started it at first to be a, a group where people can just, you know, talk with each other, re connect with other like-minded people, uh, not necessarily be a, a content based group because there is like there are already so many of mm -hmm. those where like the only discussion you you really have is like in the comments underneath the post and that's like only until you know the next bit of content uh shows up so i really wanted to be a a open open group open open place for people of any spiritual path to um to connect with each other, to talk with each other about, you know, about their religion, about their beliefs, but also just about everyday things. Because, you know, not not every day, every minute can be about the gods, can be about your your religion. I mean, even our ancestors just, you know, did small talk. So right, yeah, just connect with people socially. Yeah, 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 and it is still uh very much a online thing but we are in the process of um of making it a recognized uh recognized community recognized religious community uh both in the us and in europe so we're getting wow. to, uh, we're trying to get together all the the paperwork and all the um, you know all the money that um that needs to be uh, needs to be spent and able to um to make that happen because it's it's gonna make things a lot easier if we are like truly recognized if we want to have meetings if we want to you know do rituals and all of that if we can show um you know to the yeah, yeah. Um, legitimacy of your organization yeah 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 it just it makes things a lot a lot easier and it's it's actually thanks to one of uh, my recent guests on the grammar pagans podcast who steered us um in the right direction because we, we already had it in mind that we wanted to do something like that we just didn't know what to do we didn't know where to start you know like are we are we going to register at as like a church? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not really a church and like we need an actual building for that and you know, all of that stuff. And it's like, okay, that's not happening. Okay. So like, how about we just call it a, a tribe, call it a religion and by just putting it out there, make it legit. Yeah. Okay. But like, if we want to do things, then, you know, tax and the yeah. government always needs their cuts um and then it was uh barry lynn actually reverend barry lynn who steered us in the the right direction who told us yeah you know it's just a bunch of very quick and easy paperwork to you know that and that government organization and hmm. 
you know, as long as they like the, they're pretty much gonna agree anyway, because like you know, what do they care? Oh, you want to be you want to be a legit religious community or organization? Okay, cool. You know, just yeah. don't make any trouble. Right. Um, well, that's a double edged sword. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, if it's that easy for anybody. I mean, that no wonder there's so many problem children out here, as it were. You know, like there's so if anybody or everybody can just fill out a form, and the powers that be, as we'll say, are just like basically just writing them off, like yeah, okay, whatever, just don't kill anybody or whatever. You know, it's no wonder <laughs> that there's so many again, like uh, problem organizations or, or, or groups that that shed a, a, a bad light or yeah. put heathenry and, and paganism in a negative negative light if it's that easy yeah i mean here in the in the netherlands i i checked of course it's a there's um there are a little more rules attached to it we need a um well at least a physical address uh like a, a, a physical postal address which cannot be the uh the private address of one of the the members or one of the ones who um who signed the documents and you know a phone number and all of, all of that stuff which can be you know the private number of one of the members or one of the founders um so i'm kind of you know looking into uh into a few things we already have a religious center uh like a couple minutes away from here who do um rent out space for uh you know freelancers or gatherings or whatever hmm. uh, um, so i'm like kind of in the process of doing some some research on that like okay so if i just you know, like rent a space even if i don't actually go there for i don't know let's say a day a month can i use it as a physical address can i you know give your phone number as the physical phone number because right. you know that that puts be just the the biggest things that's that's the major hurdle so far you know the physical address and the the phone number which both cannot be private um which is gonna you know cost some amount of money and um so right. far i'm paying everything out of my uh my own pocket out of my own pockets and you know doing it for the love of the tribe and love of uh love of my people and the love of um of my fellow tribal members you know we we're a great group we have some amazing amazing people but um <laughs> i'm not made of money so right nobody is man i mean uh, there's there's very few i think especially when we're talking like this type of thing you know like uh not, we're not rolling in it over here and i think that's an that's an important aspect to take into consideration when you have groups when you have a group when there's a community that's been built to support one another that the part of supporting one another is to is to fund and and to and to contribute in monetarily you know what i mean because like you say you know we're not all made of money so if it's one person's responsibility to cover all of this cost it almost certainly won't happen but yeah if you have you know 20 people split the cost up of something you know or or, or uh you know have it to be where you know some organizations have these like dues, you know, that, that are paid annual dues, mm -hmm. fees and things. Well, that money is not going into someone's pocket. It's going into the treasury for the expense of up keeping up the organization or, or you know, the the day to day uh, or event type things that happen. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, when you when you legitimize it, when you go through the, the the legal processes and 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 do all that stuff, then, yeah, it makes it. It makes it much easier to fund these types of things and, and make yeah. it. Not, not not so much of a, a burden on one person no exactly because like you can do outside fundraisers as well um you know even if it's like technically a non-profit you just make sure that you have enough expenses that you um you run at a loss every year or something um you know expenses are always 
always going to be there. You know, there mm-hmm. there are always things that that need to be need to be paid, people that need to be paid. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, indeed, step one is legitimizing it, and from there, um, everything will be a lot easier. So, we are currently in the the process of um, of doing that, and in the meantime, we're trying to um, well to legitimize ourselves as a as a tribe, as a group, uh, our Fane actually just released his um, his book. He wrote his own book. I am in the process of um, editing my own book at the moment. So you said you know, Fane, yeah, Fane. Uh, it's like um, um, what in English in the the Anglo-Saxon times a earl would be, for example. Yeah. So he's uh, the second after the uh, no. Uh, Duke, Thane would be a Duke. He's the second in, like, second in command, if you will, after the the Earl, the Jarl, is uh, his right hand man. Ah, okay. Uh, so you, so you guys have like a, you, you, you favor a, would you say? I'm going to ask. Would you, would you say you favor like in terms of your leadership structure, titles, and whatnot? Does it, does it mirror the the titles or terms that we see in like Anglo-Saxon heathenry? So, uh, we do try to do that, yes. So I call myself the Jarl of the tribe of the Grey and Pagans, since I am, you know, the leader and founder. My wife is the um, the Fru, the Fru, because uh, she is, you know, the Jarl's wife. Okay. Uh, the Thane or Duke in Anglo-Saxon, I think that it may be a little e- easier since it's an English name, is the uh, the right hand man. Of the Jarl, you know, the, the second in command, if you will. We have um, Raven, Raven Wolfgar, who is our uh, Vitki. Um, so our, yeah, like our, our spiritual guide, if you will. He does tarot readings uh, and all of that. So he's really in touch with, um, you know, with the gods the and with the other sides. Side, yeah. yeah, he's really in touch with the mystic side. Yeah, um, and yeah, basically, us four are the the core of okay. uh, the pagans, of course, along with um, with Josh, the Thane Josh, his uh, his wife. Um, Raven is still single, so if there are any lovely ladies out there, uh, I'm sure he will. <laughs> <laughs> we got we we turn in the we turn in the random heathen ramblings podcast into uh what was that what was that thing back in the day boy we, we would like uh you would call in and and hey ladies or hey gentlemen right whatever it was you know you would like those those dating like, hotlines well, we had so many of those <laughs> dating shows dating hotlines it's like <laughs> <laughs> they were creepy back then boy there were some weird ones oh yeah <laughs> there's some odd ones back there so that's cool man um our you know so in in my part of the country uh, i feel fortunate to have become familiar with a lot of uh heathen groups and believe it or not like this part of the country gets referred to as the bible belt Mm. because every corner that you turn down there's a church you know what i mean and it's very very heavily influenced by christianity and uh if if you're looking for a church you don't have to look far you know what i mean so I would say the majority of the population religiously um, are Christian uh, to some degree at, at some, you know, at some point. However, yeah. there is a rich and vibrant uh, community of alternative religions, not just European uh, paganism. You know, so we have like Celtic groups. There are covens. There are kindreds of, of Germanic heathens, one of which... Um, is ours of course but uh there's another one that is in like about about 50 miles or so north east of of where i live um so it's in like the middle tennessee area but but in this area there are again small little secular kindreds or tribes where one of them but one of the one of the more prominent ones one of the one of the ones that do a lot of public events in our area um is, is about 30 miles northeast of Nashville, which is about 30 miles southeast of me. So I say, you know, 50, 60 miles uh, in, in that vicinity. Yeah. And uh, 
but I'm, I'm fortunate to have again uh, to 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 be in, intertwined with 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 so many different groups because there are regular just public meetups like today while i'm recording this there's a they call them pnos or pagan night outs but it's during the day uh <laughs> where people just like meet up at a coffee shop or at a um at a restaurant or something and just have have a meal just share time with somebody you know with, with people yeah. and uh so they happen bi-weekly in our area and then there are actual like events that get put on by um this group up in uh springfield they're called raven moon hearth and uh i'm friends with their chieftain and i'm friends with their gothi and and and, and other members of their of their kindred as well but mm -hmm. um our our group is 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 smaller you know we're, we're not quite on that scale yet to to have land um or or physical space but we go and we attend and we see all kinds of folks show up you know um there are people that show up who aren't traditionally like hardcore germanic heathens there are people that show up that have a bit more of an eclectic background um i've, I've seen people show up there who really tap into their um like uh african indigenous african side of things like they, they come and they dress in their like traditional uh african garb you know to to these events and i'm like that's wild man like that's that's really cool that, that it is it's really cool it's it's great to see like you wouldn't think on the surface at least a lot of people wouldn't think that a group of germanic heathens or, or pagans who host events like this would attract or have anybody like outside of that worldview of things come to their events and yet here we are uh you know having people come in who find things about this path close enough to their beliefs that they're like i want to come and experience this i want to see what it's like and i want to yeah you know have that experience and it, even if they don't you know commit 100 percent fully to their you know the germanic side of things at least it's giving them the inspiration it's giving them the the desire to pursue things that are close to them that that speak to them you know and it inspires them yeah. to want to embrace that side of their their heritage and, and i think that's beautiful you know and we're yeah. very we're very inclusive in that way we we want people to at least that's i say we but it's like the the, the heart the raven moon hearth people um mm -hmm. they 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 are very inclusive and, and so are we my, my tribe is called clarity folk thundering storm people of the thundering storm and, and we're we're also like yeah when we do things we're going to do it the germanic way where we're, we're going to hail the gods in 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 that way um yeah but we're also welcoming to people that want to come and say you know be uh, uh you know celtic or uh egyptian or or any other sort of polytheistic path um and it yeah. sounds a bit to me like you know with with the, the Greyhorn pagans you know the vision that you had to create this community of of an acceptable space for people to come and learn about things is is is, is similar would, would you say that it has a very similar mentality um, or a similar approach or or yeah yeah i mean we're not strictly um about European paganism or the you know the European beliefs I mean just because it's you know run by European and other Germanic pagans and all doesn't mean that it has to be strictly about that I mean um like I said we, we recently had a, a few more a uh, few more people joining one of whom a a true shaman and he you know he got his um, his training, he found his his shamanism, did most of his work in India and Sri Lanka. And we have Buddhists, Hindu, uh, a couple couple of Hindus, mm. um, people who just like don't really don't really know yet, but are trying to uh, to find their path. Um, who are, you know, of course, also most welcome. That's another reason why I uh, why I founded the Grammar Pagans to also be that space for people who, like, who feel like there is more, who feel some sort of connection, yeah. but just don't know what it is yet. Mm. But you know, if you want to find out, 
Um, you know, my wife, my wife was a witch, of course, very, very eclectic. She works with, um, or works with, is not the right way of saying it, but she, um, you know, she does a lot with the, uh, the Egyptian pantheon, some of the, the great gods and, um, because of me is also learning a lot more and connecting more with some of the uh, the Norse goddesses, Freya, in particular, she's found a very strong connection with uh, with Freya lately, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this the 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 uh, the Volva, you know the yeah the the the, the magical side of, of things that of that that Freya is 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 mentioned uh, or, or attested to in in the mythology, you know. Yeah. So my wife is is very eclectic. I am well Germanic pagan at heart, but uh, you know, seeker of gnosis. So I like dive into any and every <laughs> rabbit hole that um, that I can find. Um, yeah, we're we're a pretty eclectic tribe. Like I I do indeed want to be a uh, to be a, to have it be a place for for all, for all people for all spiritual people religious people worldwide um as long as you're just as long as you're accepting of others beliefs and don't make too much respectful yeah you know yeah. Re being respectful i think that's the most important thing because like let's face it like there are there are things um even you know if it works for some it doesn't work for all and that's okay you don't have to just be like, I don't have to accept everything, but I can be respectful of people's decisions. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I yeah. think you're an idiot, and but I respect your decision to be an idiot. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I don't have to necessarily yeah. accept it and, and, and be like, oh, I think I'm going to do that. Like, no, I, I mean, have your barriers, have your boundaries. I think that's that's goes without saying. But, um, you know, not to be not to be. um so 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 far like so hardly driven like drawing the line so hard in the sand that it's because i've had I've, I've experienced that and i don't know if you have too where like some groups or some people uh it's it's again it goes back to that like absolutes dealing in absolutes it's it's either this and that's it or it's not and that's it there's a yeah. lot of things that happen in the gray um and one of the things that paganism has taught me and and of course you know my my angle is 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 heathenry dramatic heathenry mm -hmm. but one of the things that it's taught me is um what happens in the gray you know that that there's a lot that goes on that you can't really definitively draw hard lines in and some people want to get pretty um pretty pretty aggressive when it comes yeah. to, to 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 that and be like no 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 it has to be this thing that way or the other i'm like yeah but why why really why like why do we have to be so left or right i mean yeah i mean some even some pagan groups manage to be dogmatic which is just yeah i, I no. don't i don't get that you know that's that's um I, that would, i think was what I was talking about with uh, Heathens for Oath and Honor, it started off as a, you know, as a really good group, you know, a bunch of really cool people who seemed to know what they were talking about. But then, you know, as soon as ego took over, it was, you know, their way and their way only. And if you tried to bring anything outside of that in, you got a stern talking to and you know at some point i even you know i got called out in the um in the admin admin group chats uh that you know i had to control my wife and i was like excuse me excuse me yeah <laughs> yeah now you know look there's i think dogma right that's a topic that i've had um i haven't really like dived into too heavily the i i think that depending on the the angle that you're approaching heathenry at you know um i think that if you're open enough to 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 the studies and the research of things i think that it's 
it's impossible for you not to see that dogma exists in heathenry to some degree. Yeah. There are certain things that are dogmatic about heathenry. Like if you look at, um, and this, the, the exact source is escaping me, but I want to say that it was a, uh, Swedish in, in its origin. Of winter nights. Mm -hmm. And different times, different uh, regions celebrated different uh, winter nights differently to the extent that, like, for instance, I believe the Norwegians winter nights celebrations evolved to become a public affair. People would come and they would celebrate winter nights with everybody. Whereas the yeah. Swedes, I think it was the Swedes. I don't want to, if anybody watches and listens and, and catches this and, and finds something differently, share it in the comments below. I want to say it was the Swedes where winter nights was strictly a family affair. To the point where if somebody came and knocked on the door trying to find shelter during their winter night celebration, you were turned away. You were like, the hell with hospitality at this point. We're doing our winter night's things, and you're not part of the clan. You're not part of the family. Get out. They, they, they gate kept that, that celebration. They, they, they kept it separate from everything outside. And that's dogmatic. Like, I mean, that, that's dogmatic to them. That was the, We are absolutely not budging here on this particular thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, uh, I think it's important to remember, too, like what we're looking at in the time of when it was happening. Some so many things that I see happening nowadays is, is, is people, you know, we're talking about reconstruction, revitalizing an old ways religion. Uh, you yeah. Know, things that happened before Christianity, before the Viking Age. You mentioned earlier about wanting to investigate and learn about things that happened prior to the Viking Age when Scandinavia and these countries become became Christianized uh, when you start realizing like the, the, the various like uh, regional and, and closed off practices of, of certain areas. Well, why was it that way? That was also a very long time ago. And, and we're in now in modern times and it's, you know, the, is it practical anymore to be that to, again, to have that such a hard line drawn in the sand? I, I don't know, you know, to some degree, I think that preserving that, the integrity of the belief, the integrity of the practice for what it is, uh, is noble. I think there's, there's, I think the intentions maybe are valid, but the purpose behind it, if you don't, if you don't go into the purpose of why it was done back then, then you're, then you're missing the, you're missing the mark. You're missing the point. Yeah. Don't just do it because it was done that way a thousand years ago. Why was it yeah. done that way a thousand years ago? What was the purpose behind it? And if you can develop your purpose now and and and, and apply it in a, in a modern context that, that works now, understanding some of the worldviews of, of the Germanic peoples and, 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 and seeing how it can transfer into a modern day worldview or a modern day uh, approach to things, then, then by all means, like, you know, I wouldn't stop anybody, but don't, don't, don't just like jump on this bandwagon of doing things because it was done a thousand years ago. And that's the only reason why we're doing it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, you know, also one of the, uh, the bigger questions that I try to answer in, um, or try to find some sort of answer in the tribe and on the podcast is how do we apply the, um, the ancient knowledge in, these times, you know, as, as you just explained, like, okay, they did it a certain way. Why did they do it? And how do we apply it to these times? Like we're living in, you know, 2023, not a thousand 23 mm -hmm. times are different times have changed and to like completely ignore that or just, you know, don't want to, give in it's like oh this is how our ancestors did it this is how how we are going to do it no that's that's not that's not possible anymore you know not like not one on one not not, not a, a carbon copy sure you can still you can still do things the way they did it of course by all means do so but you have to adapt you have to adapt certain practices you have to evolve with the times as well and 
you know, one of the, the bigger questions in, well, I think like the whole pagan revival is how do we do that? How do we mm -hmm. apply the knowledge and the ways of our ancestors in, in these times? Cause you know, back yeah. then they, they didn't have, you know, computers, podcasts, whatever. I mean, heck, like even 20 years ago, we didn't have things like podcasts. I know. Right. Like how did the tribes connect? Well, you know, either they already knew of each other or they stumbled into each other or, you know. Yeah. Or there were there were annual assemblies like, you know, we have we have uh, source sources that that confirm. Uh, I believe it was. Um, it was with the, the, the all thing. Uh, the, you know, yeah. So you had you had your all thing. You had every year there was all the tribes would come together and meet at one place. And, and uh and that was the, yeah that was when the politicking was done that's when you know beefs right. were settled and all of that so yeah, yeah you, didn't, you didn't have an online comment section that you could shit talk to each other in you know <laughs> <laughs> it was it was man you know a year ago you know stein not to like i'm just using names all right well, stein over here you know he he he, he took some of my sheep and uh you know, we, we we didn't get to settle that. Well, now we're here at the all thing, and Stein and Jesse are at the all thing. And by the way, you know, you owe me some sheep. So what are we going to do about it? Are we going to go to war, or are you going to pay a penalty, or what, whatever? And that was the purpose of the all thing. Like yeah. they, well, all the all the things, but all uh, the tribes came together. Took you know? it out, or you know, right. Um, and and that was again the, the, that was how things worked at the time. We're not in those times anymore. Um, no. Uh, you know, having having an all thing, uh, or calling it as such, is cool, right? Like it's great. Like oh wow, cool. Like we're gonna have this all thing where where all the tribes of the of the region or or something are gonna are gonna come. But but why? Why are we having an all thing? Is it because this tribe and that tribe are having a beef and we need to settle it because it's doing damage to the overall larger community? Because when these two groups are 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 feuding it's 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 not allowing for growth it's 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 stifling the the progression of things right and we need to we need yeah. to come to a an agreement of well once this thing happens once this is done it's done the the, the beef is settled we we we've, we've squashed it now let's move on you know or is it just this oppor or or is it just this thing where we're we're calling it an all thing and we're not we're not putting enough respect on that and it's just an opportunity for people to hang out and drink and get stupid and crazy and do all kinds of bad things uh, yeah. and, and, and further it's, damage each other's luck and, and the luck, the collective luck of, of, of tribes, you know, like it. I mean, if you want to do that, go right ahead, but then don't call it an old thing. Just call it a meeting, call it a gathering, call it whatever, you know, yeah, don't, call it a moot don't, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, there's, there's a place for that like there's you know it's hey i'm not saying like don't don't you know I'm not trying to be a stick in the mud here like hey sometimes it's really it's good it's wholesome for people to gather and just have a good time you know yeah. um within reason and 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 have boundaries set and be respectful of course but i mean that's just what it is that's what it's about it's about gathering having a good time tying that kind of weird together like you talked about before that the, the web and the, th the threads that get interwoven it can do really it can do really good things it could also do damaging things if you're not careful and, and you're not you don't have those safeguards in place but it goes that again it goes back to what i was saying about the gatekeeping thing or or being a gatekeeper is like but well why why did the swedes not want outsiders coming into their house during winter nights well there was a purpose behind it because that was for the family that was that was just for the family or yeah. for the families, you know, it wasn't for anybody outside. It's like, hey, not trying to be a jerk, but get out. You're not welcome you know? here. You, you've got 300 and some odd other days of the year that you could, you know, tough luck. Sorry, Charlie. Like, you know, I hate it for you, but you, you're just not welcome here. We're yeah. doing our thing now. And that's OK. It's it's, it's fine. It's, it's good to have those boundaries set and to be um, to be staunch in that, you know, in, in those in that context, I feel. In, in, yeah. in that area of, of, of the no place. definitely i mean it's it's a religious feast just for the family so keep it in the family or the fam you know families of that 
village or tribe or whatever, you know? Yeah. And outsiders, I mean, sorry, you know, this is how we set our rules. This is how we set our boundaries. You're not part of it. Next yeah. time, you know, try yeah. some other day. Right. And that's so much of what we see, I think, on, uh, which, by the way, you said, you know, your your Greyhorn Pagans, the tribe of the Greyhorn Pagans, as you call it. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you guys? Um, we are on all kinds of different platforms. Um, all can be found on our websites, www.greyhornpagans.com. Um, the website is still fairly new. I'm, uh, you know, editing things and um, trying to make it make it look nice and have everything on there uh like we were on so many different platforms and scattered that i was like you know we just need a website where i can put it all on and then people can go to the, the one stop shop yeah there. yeah 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 it's just so much easier otherwise it's a whole like laundry list okay so we're on that platform we're there you can find us here and there it's just like no go to www.greyhornpagans.com that's where all the links are to, you know, uh, personal links to, you know, our blogs, uh, Thane Josh's book, to, okay. you know, social platforms that we are on. The podcast can be found on there, of course. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. So then people that are listening and watching uh, head into the description, show notes area of the podcast and uh greyhornpagans.com is the is the website and and that's yes. where you can find everything about what stein here is talking about um and it doesn't matter where you are in the world from the sounds of it you know you can be in the united states you can be in europe um you can learn more about what these folks are doing you can be a penguin on the south pole for all i care <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's yeah. a bit much <laughs> Man, you never know, man. There might be some penguins down there looking for a community. You never know, right? <laughs> That'd be a first. I'm definitely one of a kind. <laughs> that would be. That would be. Well, this has been a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you coming on and uh, and and sharing with the world, you know, what's going on in your neck of the woods, but how you're attempting to branch out and reach more people. Um, and also, I'm really glad to hear that you're also looking at the the grassroots aspect of things, you know, having things yeah. established for people on the ground, uh, because there's 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 a lot of this stuff online nowadays. And, and, and people think that once they're joining a group online or they're in a discord server or a Facebook group or whatever that yes i am now a member of the tribe and i am uh you know we are brothers and sisters and rah 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 and i'm like <laughs> mm. i mean i don't i don't want to speak on behalf of all germanic heathens or, or 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 be this like spokesperson for heathenry by any means um all i'm saying is that no that ain't it buddy that that's not it um you have to be with people in person to experience these things at least to that degree uh, yeah. have that community on the grassroots level because that's how it was done. That that's, uh, that, that's where this all comes from. And yes, we are modern heathens. We, we live in modern times. We are practicing old ways in modern times. Uh, many of us again, revitalizing, trying to, to, to reconstruct or, or revitalize these, these ways, but at its very root and at, and at the very core, um, it, it has to be something that you share with people face to face. Um, and if people that are, like you or others are out here building an online community to help network and, and show case the, the ability to do that and, and establish things at the grassroots level, then I'm all for it. Um, and so I'm glad to hear that you've got that in vision uh, that you're not just like, let's get 10,000 people in our discord server. And now we're, you know, we're, we're taking over the world guys. Like, hmm, maybe yeah. not, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, it's a good start. Of course, to um, yeah, it has its place. Come together in those those online communities, it's a good place to you know kind of get to know people at first. But yeah, it's a start. You know, it's it's something. It's you know, it can be a foundation, but build from there. Yeah, yeah, and it, you know, again, it has its place. I, I I've I've become friends with people to the extent that you can be online because of the modern conveniences of social media. 
Yeah. I've also been able to establish really meaningful frith, bond, frith bonds with people uh, at the grassroots level because of this. You know, it didn't. It it started online, but it didn't end online. We were, we're you know, we 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 made the efforts to connect physically, and and become something of what our ancient ancestors had. You know, the 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 sense of community, the the meaning of tribe you know having the people that you can rely on who rely on you that reciprocal existence yeah um it, it, it's 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 paramount i yeah. think to to developing our our worldviews and and refining our worldviews and becoming uh heathens and, and, and pagans ourselves that reflect the way it was done in in, in bygone days you know we're just showcasing the, the the modern flair of of it now, and 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 showing, you know, stuff like this didn't happen. Uh, you know, like you said, you know, even as early as you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you know, people didn't have this kind of interaction like we're having here now. It was you know letters in the mail, or you know, and and it took months, if not longer, to get yeah. people together like that. Um, but. I think it's interesting how, you know, back in the day where, you know, communities were much close, much more closely knit, you know, villages and, and, and whatnot were the miles between them, the, the, the kilometers between them, the, the distance, I say, between yeah. them wasn't very vast. You know, it, it, it may have taken a day to get to you, but that was, you know, what, maybe 10 miles, 15 miles apart because you had to walk. You had to take a horse, you know. And now here we are, you know. You have to take provisions with continents. You. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but and now here we are, you know, continents apart, thousands of kilometers apart, thousands of miles apart, having real time conversation. Uh, yeah. It's wild. It's wild, you know. And and oh, there's and a whole ocean between us, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, using these things and and leveraging them to connect in in such ways, I think helps. Uh, yeah. Showcase again the, the 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 sense of community as it was. It doesn't it doesn't replace that interpersonal grassroots level thing. Let me be clear, it doesn't replace it, but it it really helps with uh, growing it in that way and 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 allowing it to expand for people. So yeah, it helps getting a community together from which you can build. Yeah. It's, it's you know it's all fine and dandy to you know want a tribe, but or you know want to have that to build it up from the grassroots level but you got to have support you got to have people interested you got to have you know you got to have your people yeah yeah you got to have your people man and the people that you have have to trust you you have to trust them there has to be this reci reciprocity you know yeah. obligation understanding that sort of thing like if i need you i know i can rely on you if you need me you know you can rely on me like there's there's all of that that becomes integral with yeah. us but this has been great man i appreciate you coming on today um hang yeah, on just you. a minute while yeah. i sign everybody off but yeah if, any any last words that you'd like to tell my audience or 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 share with the world before i uh wrap this up today <laughs> oh that's that's a good one um no i just want to uh i want to thank you for uh for having me on it's uh it's been great and I, uh, you know, I look forward to, uh, to a possible next time. Cause I think we, uh, like we can definitely build, uh, build on this and yeah, you know, good luck with your, uh, with your group, with your kindreds. And, uh, I hope you, uh, you make something great of it. Thank you. And same, t same to you as well. Uh, it's very ambitious with what you have with the Greyhorn pagans and, um, I hope that the good that you're wanting to come of it, it comes to fruition. Um, so I'll best of luck to you with that. Thank you. That's, that's the spirit. So uh, everybody, please to check out the description or show notes of the podcast and uh, check out Greyhorn Pagans online. Uh, follow along with what they're doing. Stein here, thank you so much for, for taking time out of your day all the way in the Netherlands to, to speak with me today here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, it's been wonderful, and I appreciate it. Thank and you for everybody. Yes, sir. And for everybody else that's out here listening and watching today, thank you for your constant support. Check the description show notes for the Linktree link 
to all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings and the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast as a whole. Follow me on all the socials. Do all the things that these fickle algorithm gods so ungraciously demand. And until we see each other again, may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you.